Hello, and welcome to today's training entitled Supporting the Education of Unaccompanied Youth Experiencing Homelessness in Nebraska. I'm Christina Dukes with Pearl Strategies. I'll be your presenter today. Thanks for joining. This training is offered by the Nebraska Department of Education's McKinney-Vento Homeless Education Program in partnership with Pearl Strategies and Schoolhouse Connection. Pearl Strategies is an education consulting firm supporting the homeless education field and its cross systems partners. Schoolhouse Connection is a national nonprofit organization working to overcome homelessness through education via strategic advocacy and practical assistance. Here's where we're headed today. First, we'll look at who are unaccompanied youth, including the McKinney-Vento Act definition and some of the causes and effects of youth homelessness. Then we'll review the educational rights of unaccompanied youth, including K-12 supports and assistance for the transition to post-secondary education. Before closing out, we'll identify resources you can access for more information. Feel free to pause the video at any time to process the information shared or take a stretch break. Also, don't forget to download the slides handout so you have access to the hyperlinks shared throughout. You also can download the slide deck to be customized for your use when providing your own training. Let's get started. Who are unaccompanied youth? First, let's set the context with McKinney-Vento Basics. The McKinney-Vento Homeless Assistance Act was originally passed into law in 1987 and represented the first significant federal legislative response to homelessness. The act authorizes assistance to people experiencing homelessness, including housing interventions and supportive services. In education circles, when referring to the McKinney-Vento Act, we're usually referring to Subtitle 7B of the Act, the Education Subtitle, which was reauthorized by Title IX Part A of the Every Student Succeeds Act in 2015. It establishes the definition of homeless and unaccompanied youth used by U.S. public schools and authorizes rights and services to address the unique educational barriers and challenges faced by these students. To ensure its implementation, the act requires state education departments to designate a state coordinator for homeless education who oversees the act's implementation in districts throughout the state. And likewise, school districts must designate a local homeless education liaison who oversees the act's implementation in schools throughout the district. Visit the link on the slide to access Nebraska state coordinator and local liaison contact information. When we refer to students experiencing homelessness, what do we mean? The McKinney-Vento Act defines homelessness as a child or youth who lacks a fixed, regular, and adequate nighttime residence, including sharing the housing of other persons due to loss of housing, economic hardship, or a similar reason. This is commonly referred to as doubling up. Living in motels, hotels, trailer parks, or camping grounds due to the lack of alternative adequate accommodations. Living in emergency or transitional shelters or abandoned in hospitals. Living in a public or private place not designed for or ordinarily used as a regular sleeping accommodation. Living in cars, parks, public spaces, abandoned buildings, substandard housing, bus or train stations or similar settings and migratory children living in the above circumstances. Think of lacking a fixed, regular, and adequate nighttime residence as the definition's guiding phrase, setting the general standard when considering whether a student's living arrangement meets the definition. The definition continues with including and lists living arrangements that would be considered homeless because they are not fixed, regular, and adequate. Because it is difficult for federal statute to anticipate every living arrangement that could be considered homeless, there may be other living arrangements that would be considered homeless because they are not fixed, regular, and adequate, but that are not listed in the definition. Unaccompanied youth also are eligible for McKinney-Vento rights and services. The McKinney-Vento Act defines unaccompanied youth as a homeless child or youth 
not in the physical custody of a parent or guardian. For a student to be an unaccompanied youth, two things must be true. The student must be experiencing homelessness, meaning that their living arrangement meets the McKinney-Vinto definition of homeless, and the student must be unaccompanied, meaning they are not in the physical custody of a parent or guardian. A custody or guardianship issue alone is insufficient for a student to be considered an unaccompanied youth. The McKinney-Vinto Act does not include age-related eligibility criteria, including for unaccompanied youth. As long as a child or youth is eligible for K-12 education in the state of Nebraska, if the student is experiencing homelessness on their own, they are considered an unaccompanied youth, whether in elementary, middle, or high school. Schools may wonder whether a student who ran away from home can be considered an unaccompanied youth. The answer is yes. A student may be considered an unaccompanied youth regardless of whether the student was forced from the home or left of their own volition. In cases where a student has run away, including instances where the parent may allow the student to return home, it may have been due to a difficult or even unsafe or abusive home environment. In these cases, the details of what has caused the separation between the parent and the student may not be shared with the school by the parent or student due to its sensitive or private nature. In these cases, schools should focus on the nature of the student's nighttime living arrangement and whether it meets the McKinney-Vinto definition of homeless, rather than on making a value judgment about why the student is not under the care of a parent or guardian. While it's important to recognize that each individual student represents a unique set of circumstances that led to separation from their family, common causes of youth homelessness include abuse or neglect within the home, such that the youth is forced from the home by the parent or guardian, or the youth leaves home for their own safety and well being. Household conflict or toxicity due to a youth's or parent's alcohol or drug use. Conflict related to a student's sexual orientation, gender identity, or pregnancy. And other challenging household dynamics, which may include pressure for youth in low-income households to become financially independent before they are equipped to do so. National research by Chapin Hall at the University of Chicago shows that particular subpopulations of youth are at higher risk for homelessness. Lack of a high school credential was shown to be the single greatest factor placing youth at risk of homelessness. Other subpopulations of youth at a higher risk for homelessness include low income youth, Black or African American youth, unmarried parenting youth, Hispanic non white youth, and LGBT youth. The upheaval and trauma experienced by youth dealing with homelessness on their own can take a very real toll on their well being and ability to thrive. This results in disproportionately high rates of unmet basic needs, poor health, untreated mental health issues, substance use, sexual, physical, or criminal exploitation, and school disengagement. While these data demonstrate trends, it is important to remember that youth are resilient and persistent. Many unaccompanied youth may thrive in school despite the stressors of homelessness, while others may struggle and need additional support. Schools can play a critical role in disrupting cycles of homelessness and poverty and helping pave the way towards a better future for unaccompanied youth. While lack of education puts youth at risk of homelessness, the, the reverse or the converse is true as well. Educational success increases the likelihood that a young person will have the skills and credentials needed to secure living wage employment and have access to the income and safety nets needed to make a lasting exit from homelessness. But lacking stable housing makes it more difficult for young people to be successful in school. This bi-directional relationship between housing and education occurs against a backdrop of underlying risk factors such as mental health difficulties, racism, trauma, poverty, 
family conflict, and social isolation that, when addressed, can help prevent both homelessness and school dropout. Schools and their community partners must work together to support access to safe and stable housing for youth experiencing homelessness while also providing targeted and intentional educational supports. Educators can make a difference in the lives of youth experiencing homelessness by engaging with them in a trauma-informed and supportive manner. Unaccompanied youth are entitled to certain educational rights and services. Let's take a closer look. In sum, unaccompanied youth have the same educational rights and access to the same services as students experiencing homelessness with a parent or guardian, including immediate school enrollment, even if lacking required documentation, the right to attend either the school of origin or the local school according to the student's best interest, School of Origin Transportation, College Preparation and Readiness Assistance, services comparable to those provided to non-homeless students, categorical eligibility for Title I Part A supports, and categorical eligibility for free school meals. For more information on these rights, view the Nebraska Department of Education's McKinney-Vento 101 recorded training or visit the website of the National Center for Homeless Education. And in recognition that unaccompanied youth face unique educational challenges, the McKinney-Vento Act names specific ways in which schools and local liaisons must help unaccompanied youth. For instance, schools must address enrollment barriers or delays caused by guardianship issues. While schools can choose their approach to addressing guardianship-related barriers, unaccompanied youth must be enrolled in school immediately, even if unable to provide proof of guardianship. Some schools allow unaccompanied youth to enroll themselves, while others allow an adult caregiver to enroll the student using a caregiver affidavit or allow the local liaison to enroll the student. McKinney-Vento also requires local liaisons to provide targeted supports to unaccompanied youth, including helping them obtain any needed records, such as immunization or other health records, once immediate and full enrollment has occurred, helping them access school of origin transportation if needed, and helping them access the McKinney-Vento dispute resolution process if needed. The McKinney-Vento Act also requires that local liaisons inform unaccompanied youth that they qualify as independent students on the Free Application for Federal Student Aid, or FAFSA, and assist with verification of the status. Independent students don't need to include parent information on their FAFSA, and their federal financial aid is calculated based solely on the student's income and assets, and not those of their parents. This ensures that unaccompanied youth who may be estranged from their parents and won't receive any family contribution towards their school or living expenses can still access higher education. Visit the Schoolhouse Connection website to access a simple template local liaisons can use to document unaccompanied youth's independent student status. Some students who are experiencing homelessness and being served under the McKinney-Vento Act also will be receiving special education services under the Individuals with Disabilities Education Act, or IDEA. While a full exploration of IDEA is beyond the scope of this training, there are a couple of IDEA provisions related to unaccompanied youth that are worth highlighting. Under IDEA, a parent usually serves as the student's educational decision maker and plays a pivotal role in consenting to special education evaluations and helping develop the student's Individualized Education Program, or IEP. IDEA defines parent to include a natural, adoptive, or foster parent, a guardian, but not the state in cases where a child is a ward of the state, or an individual acting in the place of a natural or adoptive parent with whom the child lives or an individual who is legally responsible for the child's welfare. 
unaccompanied youth may not have a caring adult who is acting in a parental role. In these cases, the school district must appoint a surrogate parent and if needed, a temporary surrogate parent to fulfill the role of educational decision maker. A surrogate parent should be appointed within 30 days of identifying the need. This person may not be involved with the care or education of the student and must not have any interests that conflict with the best interest of the student. Given that unaccompanied youth often experience high rates of residential and school mobility, time is of the essence in ensuring that unaccompanied youth with special needs receive appropriate and timely IDEA supports. As such, a temporary surrogate may be appointed immediately until a surrogate parent has been identified. A temporary surrogate parent may be involved with the care or education of the child, but must have no interest that would conflict with those of the student. Speak with your district's special education program if you are working with an unaccompanied youth who may have special education needs and be in need of a surrogate or temporary surrogate parent. As we close out, we remember that the McKinney-Vento Act includes a broad and ongoing requirement for schools to develop, review, and revise policies and practices that pose educational barriers for McKinney-Vento students, including unaccompanied youth. Keeping unaccompanied youth safe and engaged in school is not only required by law, but is beneficial for the student and the school. For more information about strategies for ensuring educational access and success for unaccompanied youth, download the National Center for Homeless Education's Unaccompanied Youth Issue Brief. This has been a brief overview of the educational rights of unaccompanied youth, but there is certainly more to explore. Consider these options for more information visit the website of the Nebraska Department of Education's Homeless Education Program. Visit the website of Schoolhouse Connection. Visit the website of the National Center for Homeless Education, the U.S. Department of Education's Federal Homeless Education Technical Assistance Center. Or download the U.S. Department of Education's non-regulatory guidance for the Federal Education for Homeless Children and Youth, or EHCY, program. Program guidance helps fill in details about McKinney-Vento implementation that may not be explicitly stated in statute. Well, that's it. You have completed the Supporting the Education of Unaccompanied Youth Experiencing Homelessness in Nebraska training. Hopefully, the information you learned today will help you in your work. Feel free to reach out to the Nebraska Department of Education, Pearl Strategies, or Schoolhouse Connection should you have questions about content covered in today's training. Thanks for joining.